Now you're ready to put up the tripod or structural framework of your teepee. Lay the poles on the ground to compare them. They should all be about the same length. Set the straightest and strongest pole aside to use as the lifting pole. Next, set aside three of the strongest poles that will be used for the tripod. Also, set aside the two thinnest and lightest poles to be used for the smoke flaps. Now, stretch the teepee cover out flat with the outside up to measure the poles for the tripod. The canvas cover of the teepee is a large half circle sewn from strips of canvas. Each added strip is sewn so the seams will shed water. The lifting tie, smoke flaps, center tie cords, lacing reinforcements, and the door opening are sewn onto the first strip. The cover is finished by pressing small rocks into the canvas from the inside to form a nodule on the outside of the teepee. A short rope about 26 inches long is tied around this nodule to form peg loops which allow the teepee to be staked down. This is done all the way around the perimeter of the teepee. Place the first pole across the center of the canvas with the sharpened base even with the arc that forms the perimeter of the teepee. The top of the pole will extend across the lifting tie in the center of the long straight side. Stretch the canvas tight along the pole and make a heavy mark or ring around the pole even with the lifting ties. Mark the second pole of the tripod exactly as you did the first. The third pole of the tripod is the door pole. Measure it across the canvas cover just behind the door. Place the base of the door pole about six feet from the front edge or seam of the cover and extend it across the lifting cords, similar to the first two poles. Stretch the canvas and mark the door pole the same way you did the other poles. This diagram shows the placement of all the poles. Notice the three tripod poles and the order in which the rest of the poles are put into place. To set up the tripod, place the two poles that are marked the same on the ground. Put the bases where you want pole number one of the tripod to stand. Point the poles in a northerly direction across the spot where the teepee will stand. Place the third tripod pole directly on top of the first two poles with the markings even. You'll notice that the last pole is about 18 inches longer at the bottom than the first two poles. Put a small block of wood under the poles just below the marks to raise the poles and to make it easier to wrap the rope around the poles. Tie the poles together using one end of a 45 feet long, one half inch diameter rope. Stretch about seven feet of the rope across the poles and tie a clove hitch. Pull the clove hitch tight. Make two more wraps around the poles, then form two half hitches. This secures the end of the rope and finishes the knot. Now you can move the base of the top pole, or pole number three, to the approximate location where it will stand. You'll need another person to help lift the poles to their tripod position. While the assistant pulls the poles up with the long rope, you lift the tops of the poles and raise them higher and higher while walking toward the base of the two rear poles. When the poles are standing upright, swing the outside or rear pole back in the direction the tops were pointed. The teepee is pitched as an oval with an average diameter of 18 feet. As a result, the tripod poles will not be the same distance apart. Position the back two poles about 16 and one half feet apart and 17 and one half feet from the front pole. 
This will place the poles in their approximate locations. From here on, we'll refer to the front pole as the door pole, since it stands on one side of the door. Please note that there are three sections in the tripod that will be filled with poles. We will refer to these sections as the north, south, and west sections, since the door normally faces east. Now, begin placing the rest of the poles in position. Beginning at the door pole, position the four poles that go in the north section. The first of these poles should be relatively strong to form the second door pole. The poles will all lean into the front crotch and the tops will rest over each other to create a spiral appearance. Next, beginning at the door pole again, place the four poles that go in the south section. These poles are also set in the front crotch over the top of the first poles. The west section has four poles. However, for now, put only three poles in place. You'll leave the lifting pole out until you're ready to raise the canvas cover into place. Starting at the north end of this section, position two poles in place, resting them in the rear crotch that has been formed by the other poles. The next pole position is reserved for the lifting pole, which will be put in place later. In the meantime, place the last pole directly on top of the other poles in the rear crotch. This pole can be one of the thinner poles because the crotch it fits into is fairly small. Recheck the poles to make sure all are in place and the tops are arranged in a spiral pattern. Now, take the end of the long rope that hangs from the center of the standing poles and carry it out through the poles on the east side of the south tripod pole. Walking around the poles clockwise, whip the rope so it fits tightly to the smallest part where the poles cross. Tug on the rope each time you go around the poles to secure the poles as tightly as possible. When you've completed four turns around the poles, take the rope back to the center of the poles by going on the east side of the north tripod pole. Drop the rope there for now. Begin putting up the teepee cover by measuring the lifting pole on the cover the same way you did the tripod. Place the lifting pole in the center of the canvas cover just like the first tripod pole. This time, 
Mark the pole in a hollow or above a knot if possible. This will help hold the weight of the heavy canvas without slipping. Now you can slide the pole under the canvas and tie it securely to the cover. Tie the cord on both sides of the pole to ensure that it won't slip. Go to the bottom of the pole and begin gathering the canvas so it lays like a closed fan on top of the pole. Secure the canvas to the pole with one of the ropes that are tied to the bottom of the smoke flaps. Use a knot that can be pulled out easily after the pole and cover have been lifted into place. This will help keep the weight of the cover from pulling the lifting cord below the mark and allow the canvas to touch the ground when the teepee is pitched. With the help of your assistant, lift the pole to its place and rest it over the wrapped poles in the rear crotch. Work carefully so that the lifting pole doesn't break from the added weight. If the canvas slips below the mark where it was tied, you'll need to repeat the procedure until the cover is properly placed. Once the lifting pole and canvas are in proper position, untie the smoke flap ropes and begin pulling the canvas cover around each side of the poles toward the door on the east side. As you begin pulling the canvas, be sure the smoke flaps are turned to the outside of the teepee. The canvas will pull more easily if you flap it up and down to form an air cushion for the canvas to ride on. Bring the canvas together across the door opening and let it rest there. You'll notice the center cords are quite high. To reach them, the Indians would make a ladder. They'd use the ends of the ropes that are tied to the bottom of the smoke flaps to lash the front stake across the two door poles. If you do this, make sure you secure the pole tightly enough so it won't slip. With this ladder, you can reach the center tie cords to pull the canvas tightly and tie it securely. Now you can weave the splicing pins through their reinforcements, starting at the top. As you face the teepee, the canvas on the left lays over the top of the canvas on the right, and the pins are laced from right to left. When you can reach this work from the ground, remove the ladder and finish putting in the lacing pins. The liner of the teepee is a series of panels sewn together so that they can be tied to the inside of the poles. Starting at the door with the south section, you can tie the lower set of strings to the bottom of the poles. Each time you tie the string to the next pole, you should adjust the pole to conform to the liner and to stretch the cover of the teepee tighter. It's easiest to do this from the outside of the teepee using an overhand knot and simple bow knot. Continue this process to the other sections. Now, go to the inside of the teepee to stretch and tie the top of the liner to corresponding poles. The liner is only about five feet high around the inside of the teepee. The string should be wrapped tightly around the pole as many times as possible and tied securely with a square knot. You will probably need to adjust the poles again to make the liner fit properly. You can tie the inner door flap of the liner back to leave the door opening free.
When you finish this procedure, you'll notice the liner has a skirt that lays on the ground toward the inside of the teepee. This skirt seals out the wind that blows under the bottom of the outside cover and forces it up between the two layers to create a draft. This draft will vent the smoke from the fire and keep fresh air circulating in the teepee. Once the liner is completely tied in place, you may wish to go around again and readjust the poles until both cover and liner fit properly. Now you can stake down the outside cover of the teepee. Following a prescribed sequence allows the teepee to conform properly to the poles. Slip your finger through the stake loop on the bottom of the cover. Twist it several times. Then slide the stake into place and drive it into the ground. Begin with the front two stakes. Then go to the four stakes in the back of the teepee and finally the remaining stakes. Now you can install the poles that hold the smoke flaps in place. These are often called the fly poles. Grasp the pole firmly near the base and insert the tip of the pole into the pole pocket at the top of the smoke flap. This requires strength and usually several tries. Once the pole is in the pole pocket, Move the base of the pole to the back side of the teepee and place it on the ground with the smoke flap fully extended. The pole should rest about one foot behind the perimeter of the teepee. Repeat these steps for the second fly pole. The first time you pitch your teepee, you will need to trim the fly poles for a proper fit. Cut the excess length from the top of the poles, then round and smooth the tips so they won't wear out the smoke flap pockets. Now you can drive the front pole into the ground about four feet directly in front of the door. Drive it in far enough so that it's secure. Take the ends of the smoke flap ropes, pull them snugly to the top of the front pole, and tie them with several half hitches. At least two stakes should have been left over after you stake the perimeter of the cover to the ground. Use these stakes to secure the anchor rope that hangs from the center of the poles. Pound two stakes into the ground in the center of the teepee at different angles so they cross like the letter X. Stretch the center rope tightly and weave it back and forth around the stakes. Once you've wrapped each stake several times, tie the rope off with a couple of half hitches. The center rope can also be dropped down between the liner and the outside cover, then staked outside of the teepee to leave the center of the floor open. The final step in pitching your teepee is to install the outer door cover. Remove the lacing pin directly over the door opening. Next, lay the reinforcement patch on the door over the patch above the door. Then, thread the lacing pin through all three layers to form the new splice. You can easily roll the teepee door closed or tie it open to invite friends into your new home. Once you have put up your teepee a few times, you should be able to pitch it in an hour or less.
Your teepee rewards you with beauty, simplicity, and enjoyment each time you pitch it. 